Hey everybody, welcome. So this is the last of the Fulcrum News weekly live streams with uh, yours truly. The last of those, at least for this season, uh, we will continue to post content over at fulcrumnews.com. Keep in mind it's an entire team of real journalists and researchers, uh, some of them former national security, some of them former law enforcement. Uh, so they will continue to produce on schedule. Uh, please share that content in year two Year two of our site, we are still ad-free, which means that we're really in it to share the information and not to make money from page views. Uh, good evening, everybody. This is the last of the hour-long live streams from me, the Wednesday night uh, Wednesday night live streams. This is the last one. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, this kind of kept us going. This kept our community going after the YouTube ban on February 21st. Uh, it really kept things moving along. So I want to fill you guys in on some of the details. Uh, why am I going away? Why is Fulcrum continuing? Uh, what is going on here, right? Uh, so I also want to celebrate. I have a bottle of real champagne. Real champagne, so I'm going to celebrate. But no worries, I'm not, not completely disappearing. Not completely disappearing. It's just the end of this chapter. The end of this chapter of life. And, uh, you know, if, if the universe wanted me to continue doing these, it would have protected my YouTube account. Uh, but it was not meant to be, right? Clearly, YouTube is a rigged platform. Uh, rigged is an understatement. It's part of the cabal that has kept people down. Uh, Eric Schmidt, the former chairman of Google, has been friends with George Soros secretly for more than 22 years. 22 years, folks, friends with one of the most evil people on the planet, which tells me something. It tells me that Google uh, Google has been a surveillance op from very early on, and they control op. Cheers, everybody. Here we go. I'm always terrified this is going to pop off in the wrong way, but here we go, folks. I took down the cabal. I can handle a champagne pop, right? Maybe not. Ugh. There we go. Boom. <laughs> All right, cheers. Kind of an emotional, uh, kind of an emotional night because I never thought this day would come. So uh, I had agreed, I had agreed to keep promoting a, what is known as PizzaGate. I had agreed to mainline the existence of a global conspiracy of total weirdos who have been in business for a long time basically a consolidation of banking and media power. And they actually tried it in a previous form in a much you know, smaller format. It was tried with the election of, uh, of President McKinley, right, the big financiers and the big globos of their time. They actually staged a kind of coup because uh, they, they didn't want some populace becoming president. And so they all backed McKinley and their newspapers, which was the media at the time, uh, they pushed McKinley on the population. And uh, McKinley, like Obama, actually won. Uh, he actually won, right? So uh, luckily none of us lived through that. He's just some corrupt dude, apparently. But now it's much more coordinated and they're much more greedy. And thankfully they've been brought down. Mm. So good. Uh, they've been brought down and what I'd agreed to do was to mainline it and really to redline to redline awareness of this stuff and to kind of guide people through it uh, until the point where I saw, uh, until the moment where I saw with my own two eyes, with my own two hands holding it, an unsealed indictment of one of the majors, of one of the major people involved. Uh, until that moment, I couldn't be 100% certain that the job was done. And again, I agreed to keep pushing until that point. And now that I've seen, uh, now that I've seen it, uh, it's all done, folks. It's all done. And it probably would not have happened for another month or two. Uh, this is not the correct timing. That's why the recent Q posts, uh, Q sounds angry that somebody leaked the fact that Trump is not under investigation by a special counsel Mueller. Uh, that was leaked early. Uh, a bad actor did that. It obviously wasn't me. I don't have access to that level of information. Uh, but Q sounds upset because now they've got to rush this. But I think people have been waiting for long enough. I think the victims of these people have been waiting for long enough. And uh, all hell is going to break loose now. But that's not my problem. And it's not really 
any of your problem uh, either. Uh, you all have done a fantastic job of believing things that sound frankly kind of unbelievable, unbelievable, right? And doing your own homework and coming to the right conclusions. Uh, so between, you know, I think between Fulcrum, the Fulcrum team, uh, Yvonne, Missy, uh, Fulcrum Europe, who will go unnamed, that whole team. Uh, I think all of those elements, and of course the audience, all of you sharing nonstop over the last, what is it, year and year and four months now that we've been operating, uh, it's really all come together. It worked. It's amazing. I can't believe it, but it worked. It was really us at Fulcrum, and it was the Q team, which I won't even fully go into that, but Q is legit. Uh, I'm not connected to Q, but it's legit. It went off the rails for a few weeks, and I called it out. It appears there was another poster or somebody kind of warming the bench, right? Somebody warming the bench with cheerleading content and keeping the audience there on, on 4chan and later 8chan, but not the real team. And then it reverted to the real team. The information you're getting now is absolutely, uh, absolutely the nastiest, nastiest uh, dirty laundry of the deep state. You're getting the real stuff now. Uh, so welcome everybody. Yeah, please share, let's get the numbers up. Uh, so the post today uh, from QAnon indicated that Mark, I won't uh, say his last name, but Mark, the CEO of this company uh, that I'm broadcasting on right now, you all know who I'm talking about, uh, Q indicated today that uh, Mark is going to step down as chairman of this company and is going to be leaving the United States, uh, which Matt Damon recently did, right? Matt Damon, an A-list actor connected to Harvey Weinstein connected to a sexual predator, Harvey Weinstein, left the United States for, I believe, Australia with his family, which means his career is over, right? He was in the Bourne Supremacy. He was in Ocean's Eleven and the whole Ocean's uh, franchise. He was, of course, a great actor in Goodwill Hunting. Uh, but it turns out his career is now over forever because nobody's, nobody wants to see, nobody wants to see movies uh, from an anti-Trumper expatriate who peaced out on the country. We finally get our freedom from these globo sickos and he pieces out. So his Hollywood career is totally done. Nobody will see his movies in the future and nobody will cast him, right? Nobody's gonna cast his ass uh, when he's hanging out in Australia as an expat, a uh, hiding, hiding from the fact that he's close with sexual predator Harvey Weinstein. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Let's focus on some positive stuff. Uh, uh, the chairman of the company that you're watching this video on is, according to Q, uh, going to step down as chairman of Facebook and is going to leave the United States. Now, we don't know what's going to happen to Jack Dorsey of Twitter, uh, but he'll be here in D.C. on the uh, 10th and 11th. Jack Dorsey will be here in D.C. I'm going to do my best to see him face to face, working all kinds of all kinds of press passes and connections to make that happen. No guarantees. But I think it's kind of important for me personally uh, to see Jack Dorsey at least once face to face and to tell him what I think of him and what he did to uh, our attempt to spread this information. He tried, I think Twitter was, aside from YouTube, Twitter struck me as the most vindictive and the most ruthless in trying to spread and trying to reduce the spread of truthful information about this conspiracy. Uh, and you'll notice. When I say conspiracy, you'll notice there is an article that nobody paid attention to uh, that came out from one of the major newswires. One of the major national newswires uh, published that Sessions has said he's not going after small marijuana, small marijuana offenses, and that has not been his focus in the past, has not been his focus, right? That was a mainstream media lie. Uh, Sessions instead uh, said that he's focusing on larger conspiracies Whatever that means, well, we know exactly what it means, right? Now that I've seen one of the unsealed indictments, our work is done. I'm not law enforcement. I'm not Batman. This has been incredibly stressful. And, uh, you know, again, it was a team effort. It wasn't just me. There's the team at Fulcrum. And beyond that, there are uh, bigger elements at play. Uh, I don't know how much I can say here, but when I came to D.C. last year for the uh, inauguration party for the Deplora Ball, when I came there, uh, I was, you know, standing around having a drink and somebody came up to you, uh, somebody came up to me and they said, hey, um, Michael Flynn, Michael Flynn wants to talk to you. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, a general's son wants to talk to me. 
Uh, and then somebody from a federal law enforcement agency, I won't say which one, uh, they wanted to talk to me and they talked to me. Uh, and so from that night forward, I was very confident that I was not spreading fake news because I had talked to a general's son who was held in very high regard by the administration. And I talked to somebody who was very high up uh, within the federal government. Uh, now, I can't really say much more, but that's why I held, I held a level of confidence when others, others had to fold due to legal threats and due to uh, threats of physical harm and other things, right? But that's why I didn't fold, is that at some level I knew even if they, even if they killed me, I would be validated. And then they went ahead and poisoned me, which, as weird as it was, uh, was probably the most fascinating one or two seconds of my life being on the other side. Uh, and I would say for the rest of my life, I'm going to be unpacking those one or two seconds. I don't have a good sense of how long it actually was, but there's so much to it that I think I'll probably unpack that for the rest of my life. And it's ironic that in trying to harm me, they gave me this incredible kind of transcendental experience. Hmm. But what's funny is when I started this, I thought it would take maybe two months. I thought that Pizzagate was so viral and would outrage people so severely, especially with the general son knowing it's real, and with General Flynn himself knowing it's real, and with the feds knowing it's real. I thought this would take maybe two months, and then I'll go down as a hero. Uh, and instead, they poisoned me, they killed me. I still believe they killed my friend, Ashley Lauren Jones. I actually had a poor glass for her. She was my best friend in my 20s, and the only woman photographed with me on my private Facebook account at the time the only person photographed with me, and uh, within minutes of me finding out on the phone that she had been murdered, uh, that she had been murdered uh, in her rural Virginia home, right, not in a big crime-ridden city, in rural Virginia, somebody came into her house, home invasion, and stabbed her to death, which is a very vindictive thing to do, I think, stabbing somebody to death when they don't really have any possessions or any wealth uh, beyond being a good person is an incredibly pathetic thing to do, uh, and so I believe, unfortunately, I think there's a 60 to 70% chance that was retribution. Um, because minutes after I got the phone call about that, I noticed on my private Facebook page, have no idea how this person even added me as a friend. Now I have a Facebook page run by my team. But back then it was just a private Facebook. And I got a message uh, saying, this is what you get for spreading that fake news about John Podesta. <sighs> I mean, even to this day, it really upsets me. There's there's something wrong with John Podesta. The guy's a monster. The guy's a monster, and Andrew Breitbart knew it, and they killed him. Uh, this is for Ashley Lauren Jones. Rest in peace. You were a true friend. A true friend, and regardless of whether it was some random gangbanger, uh, home invasion, or if it was retribution, uh, she's in a good place now. She's in a good place, and I'll never forget our friendship. Uh, and then I was mocked by people. They said, oh, you're milking your friend's death. Uh, this is all just their job. You know, I, I know it's despicable, but this is just their job. Uh, they pay people at uh, David Brock's firm to destroy the lives of people who know about the cabal. Very pathetic men and women, right? Very, very pathetic. And they're going to get theirs because I've seen proof. Uh, the, the sealed indictments, or rather the unsealed indictments now, are real. These people are effed. Uh, somebody says that they got threats too. Yeah, everybody was getting threats. I mean, Alex Jones, he's not a weak guy. Uh, why did he stop talking about this for weeks? Hey, thank you, Kerry. Uh, but yeah, just here to celebrate with you guys. And I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions though. I don't have much else to say. I don't want to say something that I, I don't want to say things I'm not allowed to say. Just uh, take it, take it on good authority that there's great stuff ahead. <laughs> Great stuff ahead, and what was supposed to take two months took about 16 months. Uh, did it for God and country, as many others did. Again, it was many of us. Uh, and never again. I will never sacrifice like this again. From here on out, it's hanging out in places like this, and champagne, and counting my bitcoins. Uh, because never again, folks. And uh, not financial advice, of course. Not personal advice. I don't know you. In some cases, I do know you guys, 
but uh, not advice. It's just true that I've bought more Bitcoin recently because I don't even care about the price of Bitcoin. Uh, the Rothschilds control trillions of dollars of wealth. And as the political fallout increases for them, uh, they're not going to be the key holders of our financial system anymore. And so there is going to be a mass move to crypto. And for reasons that I'm simply not allowed to go into, Bitcoin is the one being considered. Now, I still like Ethereum very much so. I still like how Ethereum works. I think it could be a decentralized Google one day or a decentralized app store, potentially worth uh, hundreds of billions or trillions of dollars, literally. Uh, I honestly believe that, which is why I still hold Ethereum. Uh, but between the two, uh, Bitcoin is the one that is being looked at as a Rothschild central bank replacement. Now, how this would work, I can't go into. Who told me this? I can't go into. In fact, I should not have even said that but because many of you guys are friends. I'm not going to leave you out in the cold. I'm not going to leave you guys out in the cold. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy to take any questions. This is the last, the last live stream that you guys will see for a long time. Uh, we will still be producing Fulcrum stuff nonstop. So check fulcrumnews.com every day. Uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, offing myself. I'm not going to Antarctica. I'll still be around, and you'll see, you know, two or five minute updates when it's something important. But this phase, this phase is over because we're done. <laughs> We passed the test. It was a harder test than I ever imagined, but we passed. Mm. Somebody says, light it, don't hide it. I don't have any on me right now. I truly don't have any on me. Been so busy the last couple days that it's been a very, very marijuana-free, marijuana-free experience. Rachel says, God is good. No, God is great. God is great. God is great. I mean, the most weird, the most weird, weird and unexpected gift from all this was being poisoned by these freaks because my health now is perfect, right? Fantastic health. Uh, my mind is sharper than ever because I've been fluoride free for quite a while now. Uh, but uh, yeah, that near-death experience is the weirdest thing I've ever seen and felt. And again, for the rest of my life, when I'm 70 years old, like in that movie Titanic, when the old lady, when she looks back on her young, young seduction with Leonardo DiCaprio, right, and the Titanic sinking and all that bullshit, uh, when she looks back on that as an old woman, that's how I'll feel about these past couple of years, right, and the near-death experience. Uh, that's what I'll feel because it's so vivid. And as a person who was agnostic before, it's wild to discover there are definitely bigger forces at play. Namely, there's a God. Uh, you're all very much loved, very much loved by this entity. And there's also a final boss, right? There's a final boss. There's a Lucifer uh, or a dark energy that uh, kind of combats the good energy. And I'm not a believer that it needs to be there. I think we're supposed to wipe it out and then enjoy our time here, right? I think we're supposed to be uh, living an incredible time, living an incredible experience. And if you go on the White House website and you click on the page about Trump's biography, not that you don't know who Trump is, but read the wording of it. He says that America's best days are still ahead and that we're in for exponential growth and all that. And I truly believe that. These people have been parasites to all of us. All of us, they've been parasites. Uh, yes, I will do a live stream from uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee if we can get the press pass in time. If it's not me, uh, a member of my team will be live streaming it. We're trying the best we can. And if we can't get that done, we're going to license it. We're going to license the stream uh, from an independent media outlet that will be there uh, that already has a press pass. So either way, we'll get coverage of it. I, I, I'm not going to miss out on watching these losers sweat, right? It's going to be a blast. <laughs> Yeah, this has been a really weird ride, and uh, all the people who said that I was a faker and was doing it to promote my book and all that nonsense, hopefully by now people know that's not even remotely true, and if somebody is so dumb that they still believe that, okay, all right, I'm going to live my life. I've done my, I've done my service. I'm going to live my life. <clears throat> but yeah, happy to take any other questions or comments because we do have, we should get a clock real fast. Oh, okay, we've got plenty of time.
There's plenty of time left. But yeah, also there's no reason for me to be here uh, because we're done. The cabal is wrapped up. Maybe the next couple weeks are really weird, but just enjoy it. Enjoy the show. Uh, know that you're in good hands and enjoy the show. But uh, yeah, for me, it's over. And this, honestly, as much as I love you guys, you're the hardcore watching. The hardcore people are watching. I don't have the same audience size I had with the YouTube channel, right? Back then, I was reaching 162,000 subscribers. Now I have less than 7% of my original audience. That's okay. I don't need it anymore. Don't need it anymore. And YouTube and Google fully exposed what they are. If you want to learn about the deep state beginnings of YouTube and of Google, uh, just head over to fulcrumnews.com and read that article. We've really been putting out great stuff. I've put together a great team. In fact, it's a pleasure to go on my own website and to read stuff that I didn't even know about. It's a real pleasure. Hey, we all did it. Thank you. Somebody says you did it. Well done. We all did it. This is a team effort. I was just a little, you know, little publicity whore who kept it mainstreamed when they tried to silence me in every way possible and then legally threaten me and then poison me. Uh, but I was good at publicity when I was younger. Uh, I've interviewed Trump twice. Once, uh, once was by, uh, by email, you know, I sent it to his assistant and then the second time was over the phone. So I've interviewed him twice. I think he's a good man. I can usually, I can usually vibe people out pretty well. I think he's a good person and judge him by his uh, actions, right? It doesn't matter what I think of him. He signed that executive order on December 21st, 2017. Uh, December 21st of last year, which nobody really paid attention to outside of truth media because the mainstream media didn't cover it because they're terrified they're a part of this conspiracy. Uh, but he signed an executive order on December 21st of last year that actually entered this country into a national state of emergency. That means that he could appropriate resources uh, to dealing with this threat without congressional approval and without really any kind of oversight until much later, if at all. You know, Q, uh, Q and on has said that at least 60%, 60% of this stuff has to remain private forever, basically so that society, so that civilization does not fall apart. <laughs> and I, I can tell you for a fact, the real number is probably closer to 80, 80 to 90%. A lot of what's been done uh, will never be revealed. Um, and that's just the way it goes. And, you know, live your life. We have, we're in for a great time economically. I think once we get rid of these parasites, we'll be better than ever. And uh, there's a good chance that America becomes this uh, global force, this empire, a kind of new Rome, a force for good when we're being, you know, sieged by barbarians. There's a real good chance that we, uh, we take the next hundred years and even put the Chinese in their place. Really good chance of that. But the key thing is that this conspiracy, this global conspiracy of banker weirdos who also own the media as a loss leader, they've been wiped out. Remember, I, I had to keep going until I saw the indictment for myself. I've seen it, folks. Game over. <laughs> yeah, somebody says we don't need mass hysteria. Exactly. The way that Trump and the military have done this is totally masterful. Uh, I'm, I'm so impressed. It was a masterful controlled demolition of a group of people who should have never taken power. And that's what it was. <sighs> Are there really 18,000 indictments coming down the pipe? Uh, I think the number is actually higher than that, but yes, there are. Uh, at least, I would say at least 15 to 20,000 indictments. Uh, so who are these people? Uh, they're, they're mainline mainline Illuminati bankers. Uh, there's some of the families that were recently implicated in the Canadian sex cult, right? NXIVM. A lot of those people, it involves so many more people than you thought. Basically every B-list actress, or I should say every other B-list actress is a recruiter, uh, either for this cult or for the cult above it. Because keep in mind, they're connected. Uh, and then other people are uh, unfortunately a uh, child procurers, right? They get children for these elites. Those are a lot of the indictments. And then a lot of the indictments are actually enforcers. Uh, MS-13 during the Obama administration, totally sick to think about. I don't want to focus on negative stuff, really. 
uh, since we won. But during the Obama administration, these bad people used MS-13 as their enforcers uh, to gruesomely kill people they didn't like and to kind of send a message to shut up, right, to shut up. Uh, but now there, many of those people are under indictment. So it's all, it's all getting rolled up, folks. <laughs> Took longer than I ever could have imagined, but had, had that shitty bad actor not out of the fact that Mueller, Mueller is not up Trump's ass like everybody thinks. Uh, had that not happened, uh, I think this would not be occurring until a month or two from now. Uh, I think they wanted this to be done in a slightly more controlled way. But hey, it's been, it's been what, 16 months? I think they've had enough time to organize uh, at least the basic protections. Uh, so can't answer that one, but uh, she is, uh, she's a part of the process. She's a very bad person and she will get what's coming to her. That's all I can say. Now, Podesta, absolutely Podesta. He is actually, if you go to NBC News, NBC News wrote a blog post that nobody paid attention to where they said that the Podesta group uh, is suspected to be Company A and one of the sealed indictments. Well, I mean, they put it out there for you. Nobody, nobody noticed because they didn't promote it. But uh, yeah, the Podesta company is under serious investigation. Uh, corrupt beyond belief, not to mention, of course, the child, child abuse stuff, which is in part for blackmail and in part because these people think they're invincible. They think they're above the law. Uh, Chris asks, so two more months? No, uh, pretty much imminently. This is all happening now. So between right now and within two weeks, uh, what I was saying is had somebody not come out and said, hey, Mueller is not actually anti-Trump and now the mainstream media, you notice the mainstream media is totally a hive mind. They get their marching orders why is it that all these different outlets written by different people in the MSM are all saying, whoa, whoa, Mueller, Mueller is not investigating Trump. That's big. That's big. That's your only analysis is that's big. No shit, it's big. It means you've been slandering General Flynn and his family and researchers like me and Titus Frost and journalists like Mike Cernovich and uh, all the others who've been talking about Pizzagate, it means you've been mercilessly slandering them and making Trump and his family out to be criminals when they're really American heroes of the highest order. Nobody else could have done this, right? I'm a bit player and promoting the truth, but Trump is the man. Nobody else could have done this. I mean, this is truly epic. Will they be talking about this in 100 years? Yes, they will. 100 years from now, <laughs> this moment will be talked about. It's pretty cool. Exactly. Ed says that's why they freaked when the election happened. Exactly. That's why they freaked out. That's why they've been at his throat ever since. That's not a normal reaction, right? If you lose an election, okay, you waited out for four years. You waited out for four years. They own both parties anyways. They own the Republicans. They own the Democrats. You waited out, but Trump is their worst nightmare. A self-funded, self-funded independent populist who doesn't like child abuse and he doesn't really see the need for an occult cabal controlling the world secretly. He loves money, he loves success and building stuff, and he doesn't see a world where you have to rape kids uh, to get the green light to do stuff in the world. He thinks that's ridiculous, right? So uh, Trump is truly a great man, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Uh, I don't care what anybody says at this point. I've said stranger things. Truly a great man. And actually, uh, this is totally speculative. This could be total BS. Uh, but a television producer, a uh, tele television producer I was talking to some time ago, uh, he, uh, hey, what's up, Australia? A uh, television producer said that he knew Trump and that Trump in his apartment, you know, his penthouse or whatever, he has a whole room, a whole room in his apartment that's a bank of computer screens where he's just re he's just reading sites like Infowars, and uh, and digging into conspiracies on the internet. So Trump is not your average seventy one year old. The guy is a genius, right? Genius billionaire internet troll who took down the cabal with the significant help of the uh, good elements of the U.S. military, who are essentially some of these generals are very good people. They got into it for the right reasons because they love the country and they love doing good. 
and they did not sign up to be cannon fodder for the Rothies and for George Soros. They did not sign up to open our borders, open society. They didn't sign up for that shit. Let's close that society. Time to close the society, right? Shops closed, no more. Uh, so these generals did not sign up to be cannon fodder for the Rothies. They were upset. They were looking for a candidate outside of the system who could actually win, could actually be popular with people. And they saw that Trump had 11, 11 seasons of The Apprentice and was one of the most popular celebrities in the world uh, before, before the media started attacking him. And they thought, you know what, this is our Trump card. This is our Trump card, so to speak. And uh, it all worked, it all worked, incredible, but it all actually worked. And it's actually ahead of schedule because, uh, <laughs> like I said, had this bad actor not leaked this information about Mueller, Mueller not being the total bastard that I've been painting him out as, because we had to do that, uh, he's instead been looking into the plants, the people connected to Trump who are bad actors, and then branching out to Podesta, etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, when you get to a certain age, uh, I think you wanna do right for the future, right? What does Mueller care? What does Mueller care about 20 years from now for his own personal gain? He'll be dead, right? He'll be dead or he'll be in a nursing home. Same with Trump. Trump doesn't care about 20 years from now. He's doing this to restore the country. He's doing this for the benefit of all of us. Uh, these people are not politicos. When you get into your 70s, uh, you're not worried about where you're going to be when you're 90. But yeah, the, the masterful play here is that some of the people you think are awful anti-Trumpers have been pro-Trump from day one. And some of the people that you thought were on the right side have unfortunately been Clinton assets from day one. We're living in wild times. This will go down as basically a Cold War, a Cold War World War III, right? This was World War III. It just ended. Uh, Soros lost. The Rothschilds lost. Satan, Satan, right? A bunch of dummies worshiping the devil. It lost. It's over. Game over, folks. I saw the indictment with my own two eyes. These folks are done. They came very close. It was a good game of battleship, you know, very harrowing at times. Boy, did we work for it. And now it's over. Enjoy your planet, at least if you live in the West, right? If you live in the United States or Canada or Europe, enjoy your planet. The Illuminati is being... Uh, taken out to the trash. <laughs> uh, Chris says, what a movie they can make about this. Yeah, I'm sure in six months it'll be a Lifetime Movie of the Week or something, right? I mean, when did it become over? Uh, in the last couple days. Ended in the last couple days. I wasn't convinced until today. But now it's done. Yeah, we sunk their battleship, exactly. <laughs> What about Zuck? Uh, well, Q said today that Zuck is going to resign as chairman and leave the United States. Uh, do you know if anyone with a well-known public name will be uh, arrested? Oh, yes. Uh, more, more than you can imagine. Unfortunately, you know, to go back to who are those, those 20,000-plus indictments, MS-13 enforcers, recruiters, recruiters for various elements of the cabal, and uh, many of them happen to be celebrities. Uh, some of the people who are going to go down uh, will shock you. I could mention their names now, but why do that? I'm not going to do that. That's not, that's not part of what I've been told to do. Uh, but some of the names are very famous, very uh, people who you don't, you don't think of as being evil at all. Uh, keep in mind, they control the strings. They control the strings to the media. So they prop up people who play ball and they pretty much uh, shadow ban or never even elevate people who aren't willing to play ball. So uh, yeah, some people you think are good or benign are total sociopath monsters. And who can you really trust? Who can you trust at the end of the day? You can trust God. You can trust God. God is real. Uh, somebody says Spielberg. Uh, well, you said it, not me. You're the one who's saying that Spielberg is evil, not me. Uh, yeah, exactly. Somebody says, we will know when you need to know. But here's who's good. God is good. God is great. Uh, and the Trumps are good. Truly heroes. I mean, this will go down as epic stuff. And this is the rebirth, the rebirth of an empire, the United States of America, that was damn near destroyed by a smiling Trojan horse 
known as Barry Sotoro. Barry Sotoro. Barry Sotoro, who incidentally, Trump has even called him out on Twitter. We, we uh, retweeted that on the Fulcrum account years ago. Uh, Trump called uh, Obama Barry Sotoro. He's known for a long time. Again, according to this TV producer uh, who knows Trump, uh, Trump has a room in his house where he's just got banks of computer screens like fucking Batman uh, reading Infowars and going through 4chan and stuff. Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing, but potentially real. <laughs> uh, and then other things I wanted to say, other stuff that's important. Do, uh, do go fluoride-free. It's so easy. And you'll feel like a different species after three months. Different species. You'll feel so much better. Uh, Jason says, how can we keep in touch? Uh, the newsletter. Get the newsletter, and that also funds... That funds the Fulcrum researchers and, and writers. Right now, the money that goes into Fulcrum, nearly 100%, nearly all of it goes immediately back out to my own people. I'm not hoarding it. When I say nearly 100%, we spend some money on security and some money on travel costs. But stuff like, stuff like hotels, and at this point, I fly first class. I pay for that shit myself. Uh, so when, whenever you get the subscription of the newsletter, uh, nearly 100% of it goes to my own team and us continuing to deliver the news. Uh, when will the MSM go down? Within a matter of days. Uh, look at Stephen Colbert's last tweet. Look at Colbert's last tweet. Weirdo, right? A weirdo. <laughs> uh, Stephen Colbert is the opposite of a stable genius. Whereas Trump, I believe it. I believe the guy's a stable genius. And what's interesting is Steve Jobs, uh, Steve Jobs before he died, he said that he had a lot of respect, a lot of respect for Donald Trump. And apparently the respect was mutual, right? Donald Trump recognized that Steve Jobs was a genius and Steve Jobs recognized some kind of greatness in Donald Trump. And what's funny is when Steve Jobs met with Obama, he didn't like him at all. He said he didn't get it, whatever that means, right? Obama didn't get it. Quite an understatement, <laughs> quite an understatement to say this Soros this fucking Soros Trojan horse didn't get it. But that's how Steve Jobs was, right? He loved to make things very simple. Uh, and Donald Trump is the same way. The beauty of Donald Trump, I think, is that he explains things so simply that somebody smart like myself, uh, someone smart like myself, I get it. I get what he's pointing to. And somebody who's just stressed out, you know, stressed out, not yet defluoridated. They've got a lot of bills to pay. Uh, somebody like that, they get it too. They're like, oh, at least this guy's looking out for me. And if you're somebody who's all freaked out because you're like, fuck, my pineal gland has been molested by fluoride for years. What do I do? Just start today. Just start from today. Um, it's amazing how fast the body can repair itself. There are even some uh, natural supplements you can take that are believed to uh, clear out the pineal gland uh, quite, quick, quite quickly. Uh, what is the pineal gland? It's like you have an antenna. It's like your, your brain has an antenna and they've tried to calcify it for various reasons. I'd rather not tell you what to expect. Just enjoy it. Enjoy becoming a fully awake human being as millions of Americans are already. Go fluoride free, right? CVS and Rite Aid and uh, Walgreens and Bed Bath & Beyond, they all now carry several brands of uh, fluoride-free toothpaste as well as aluminum-free deodorant, also important. Uh, aluminum leads to early onset Alzheimer's. Jeanette says, I'm so excited. I think it's the most exciting time I've ever lived through. I can't remember a week or a year as exciting as this one. Somebody says it's the seat of the soul. Yeah, exactly. It's the seat of the soul. I'm trying to put it into, I'm trying to put it into normie-friendly terms. I don't want to talk about the soul and stuff. Uh, it's like your antenna. It's like you're an insect almost who has these awesome antenna popping out and it, it gets messed up when you take too much fluoride. And again, yeah, people are saying take nascent iodine. Uh, I take one drop a day of nascent iodine. Somebody says look at CBD oil. Correct. Uh, not, not medical advice. I am not a physician. But millions of people have had their pineal glands uh, cleaned out with CBD which is not even psychoactive. Uh, you can derive CBD from the hemp plant. So you don't have to get high if you don't want to. Just taking CBD at a high enough dose, 
uh, will start to awaken your pineal gland. It's incredibly important. Uh, you can definitely, you can, you can still pray and visualize with the calcified pineal gland. And God knows what you're talking about, right? God understands you, uh, even if you're a calcified dummy. But it's so much more incredible if you actually decalcify your pineal gland. Uh, it's an incredible connection. We're all gifted with something incredible. And it was stolen from us. And now we're taking it back. We're taking it all. That's why, again, although it's not advice, I say Bitcoin. Bitcoin, folks. Uh, someone says world changing information. Well, that's why my YouTube channel was banned. They just couldn't tolerate me always popping up on the homepage of the live, the homepage of the live tab, telling people to defluoridate and that the Rothschilds are worth trillions and that George Soros pays David Brock to destroy the lives of people who out this pedophile ring. Uh, they would not let me keep saying that. I was very peaceful. I was very coherent. They couldn't allow that to reach thousands of normal people every day. But it's going to get out anyways. These people are monsters. Monsters and nobodies. And we have God on our side. We've got God. We've got the United States military. We have the Department of Justice. Uh, and we have the president. What more do you want? I mean, that's, that's a stacked deck. In fact, Trump recently, when Trump called out the Department of Justice is, is not giving him documents, right? He called it the Department of Justice, acting like he's still very angry with Sessions. That's reality TV, folks. Reality TV. He was doing damage control after it leaked uh, that he is not actually under investigation at all. Because then that tells the cabal, wait a second, if Trump's not, if Trump's not in jeopardy, and if uh, Sessions is actually totally working with him and is a good attorney general, and if Mueller has not been looking into Trump's dirty undies, then what's he been looking at, right? What has he been looking at? Uh, Mark asks, what about all the debt? Will it remain after the cabal goes down? Um, I don't want to go too much into this because it's not my area. Uh, but my understanding is that most of the $20 trillion will be wiped out. So uh, the way it works is we've seized massive amounts of money, massive amounts of money and the trillions have already been frozen. That affects our debt because we just literally take it in, right? We take it into our treasury department, uh, repatriate, repatriate that money and then it's less debt, very simple. Uh, so that's what's gonna happen. Uh, Trump has said himself that before the end of his second term, he expects the United States to have no debt. In large part, it's gonna be from these seizures from the seizures of assets from cabal members. And then part of it is also just kind of calling the, the bluff that the world, uh, you know, these world globalists have been keeping us down artificially by saying, oh, you're 20 trillion in debt. We can just say, hey, fuck you. We're gonna renegotiate. We'll give you 5 trillion and that's it. Or get the fuck out or we just default, right? So that's what's gonna happen. But I, I truly believe that is well within uh, the time range. So before the end of his second term, the U.S. will be uh, zeroed out. Yep, no debt. Uh, also, I don't want to. I don't want to promote crypto, but uh, Bitcoin for a couple of reasons because it's capped makes it very easy to uh, to deleverage a lot of our debt. Uh, if you if you take for uh, truth, if you take for truth that the NSA was involved with Bitcoin as a potential breakaway from the Federal Reserve, right? As a kind of life raft for people to get away from central banks. If you take that as a given, and this is a process that's been, uh, it's been developed uh, over a long time, right? Bitcoin is nine years old, it's not brand new. So uh, somebody said, we, we're taking our money back, we took our money back, exactly. Yeah, between the asset seizures and the trillions of dollars that the Rothschilds have, the trillions, the trillions of dollars they have, it's just, it's just the line. It's just a line in an accounting book. That's all it is, right? It's just a line, just a number. You just take it back from them and boom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of them are heading to New Zealand. A lot of them are heading to Australia. They won't escape though. They will not escape. As Q said, the streets will not be safe for them. They've got internet down in New Zealand. They have internet in Australia. When they see a Rothschild or a Podesta, they're not gonna give them a good time. So uh, let's see how we're doing on time. We've got 
about, what, 15 minutes left. Any final questions? How is the MSM going to report everything that's going to happen? They're not. Uh, what's going to happen is you're going to start to see MSM people dropping like flies, right? They're going to be off the air. They're out sick. They're on vacation, whatever. Family matters. In reality, they're people who've been indicted. And once the indictment is unsealed, uh, the next step, imminent, the next immediate step is an arrest, an arrest warrant. Uh, so, so those people will simply go off the air. As it was said many years ago, the revolution will not be televised. Turns out that's literally true. People will just turn to the internet. Uh, they'll turn to Trump's Twitter and if necessary, whitehouse.gov. Everybody should go to whitehouse.gov. It's so inspiring. It's been completely revamped from the shitty Obama site. Uh, go to whitehouse.gov. Uh, the Obama site was like, check your expectations, right? Check your expectations. You're just an American. You're just an American. Whereas the new White House website is like, boom, Roman Empire 2.0. You're a citizen of the Republic. Get the fuck out, Globos. Uh, it's really incredible. The turnaround of the website, all of it is incredible. Uh, can you do a summary? I missed the first half hour. We're gonna put uh, we're gonna put this whole thing up on Bitshoot after we end it. So later tonight, look for the archived version uh, on bitshootcom slash channel slash Fulcrum News. But yeah, it will not be on TV. They might mention they're gonna mention some elements, but basically these people are going to prison. Uh, they're going to prison, folks. So they're not gonna be on TV telling you that they fucked up. They're gonna be in jail. So if you just go to the internet. Uh, Trump will be talking about it. I'm sure his family, they'll be tweeting about it. Whitehouse.gov. Uh, and then people like me, at least Fulcrum, fulcrumnews.com, will be putting articles up. I'm sure sites like Breitbart will talk about it. Of course, Infowars. Um, yeah, you're welcome to post this on YouTube. Go for it. Uh, will we be able to share this on Facebook? Well, tonight you can. Yeah, you can hit share, definitely. But I don't know in the future... I don't know the future of Facebook. I have no idea how this is going to shake out. It's so, so bizarre. It's unprecedented. Are they taking Zuck's money? Uh, they may have already. They may have already frozen it. Uh, he and Sheryl Sandberg are in deep trouble. Uh, Chad asks, can we share your deep article from this morning? Uh, please do. Please do. Are they taking Bezos' money? I don't know. I, I don't know. I know that uh, I know that he's lost $16 billion since Trump called him out just the other day. Already a loss of $16 billion. Um, I, I don't want to BS you guys. I just have not seen his name. I know he's a really bad guy. Super bad guy. I don't know if he's turned and has been helping secretly. Right Again, some of the people that you think are evil have actually already turned and are helping the U.S. So with, with him, I don't know. I mean, he seems like a bad guy to me, but because I've not specifically seen his name, I just don't know. Yeah, cheers, everybody. This champagne is awesome. Uh, I'm so happy this is over. I'm happy not only for myself, because it means freedom, right? It means I get to do what I want now. My contract is over. Uh, but... It means good things for all of you guys. Instead of being depopulated, instead of being depopulated by a bunch of psychos, you just have, you know, a bunch of zeros, a bunch of zeros in an accounting book. Instead of that, we're living through what is going to be an incredible time. I mean, when Trump talked about a space force, we do have technology that's somewhat ahead of what people believe is possible. Now, I, I personally, I diverge. I diverge from my friend David Wilcock, all this deep space, secret space program stuff. I just haven't seen the evidence. I'm not saying it's not real. I know they do, you know, top secret cool stuff at Area 51 and Area 52. What about chemtrails? Uh, those, those were real and it's been decommissioned. I can't say much more. Uh, those were a real thing. Uh, both weather modification experiments and... Uh, IQ modification, not nice people, right? The Globos are not nice people. IQ modification, weather modification, uh, it's been ended. So when you look up in the sky, 
Uh, if you see a contrail, that's okay. You're supposed to see a contrail. That's just frozen ice, and then it goes away in a couple hours. What you're not supposed to see is a big billowing cloud, a big billowing cloud that spreads out and lasts for hours. That is artificial. Um, so yeah, that, that's the reality is the chemtrails were real and they've, they've ended, they're done. It's not a thing anymore. Again, the people who think there's still chemtrails, they're actually just contrails. The program has ended worldwide. That's part of why we're seeing so many changes in the weather. Notice the weather has been crazy lately. Not crazy, it's just we're getting more precipitation now. So it seems like we're getting a lot of snow and a lot of rain, a lot of showers. And we're really not, we're really not, so. Uh, somebody said they saw chemtrails in Vegas three days ago. Well, I don't know if those were chemtrails or not. I wasn't there. Uh, somebody says seen less chemtrails, none really. Exactly. At least in Colorado and on the East Coast, uh, they're gone. They're simply gone. I've been told it's a worldwide cancellation. It was mostly targeting the U.S. Uh, almost exclusively. We're like, unfortunately, we, we think we're so great, and we are. American exceptionalism is real. Uh, we think we're so great, but... The globalists treated us like guinea pigs. These people should be hanging. They should be hanging. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're gone. They've ended. And uh, yeah, so I don't know what you saw in Vegas. I do know Vegas is one of the weirder parts of the country. Weirder parts of the country because uh, experimental testing at Area 51 is real. I mean, there really is super weird stuff that's tested nonstop. Uh, will they get the nasty royal family? Yes, they will. They are included in the they are included in the takedown, not indictments. Uh, they're not indicted. There's a special plan for them. I won't say much more beyond the fact that Vladimir Putin, uh, Putin is going to be visiting the White House very soon uh, to talk with Trump. And Putin doesn't have a high opinion of the royal family because he knows what they're about. He's called the Queen of England an old, old wizened monkey. <laughs> He's called her an old wizened monkey. In other words, he thinks the Queen of England, Vladimir Putin, uh, thinks the Queen of England is just a dried up old monkey. He doesn't have a lot of respect for her. <laughs> Five minutes left. Any last questions I'm happy to take. And then, yeah, later tonight we'll have this up on BitChute. Uh, what did you see? How do you know this? I've seen some of the indictments. So uh, that's how I know. I've seen some of the actual indictments, some of the people named. Uh, very satisfied. Uh, 5G. I don't know much about 5G. I've heard bad stuff. I've heard it's potentially bad for DNA. Uh, it can blast apart your DNA. But you get faster, faster video downloads, right? We're such a psycho civilization. We're like, oh, it so what if it blasts your DNA strand apart? At least we can download, at least we can download the live stream a fraction of a second faster. Uh, my understanding is, is that if, if it's something very malicious, the FCC, the FCC will shut it down. Uh, of course, 5G means different things. I mean, it's not all one uniform thing because to some companies, that's just their fifth generation of, of cellular service. But the malicious kind of 5G stuff, I don't know much about it. It doesn't sound good. It does not sound good. And luckily, we have an FCC chair who is a real human being. Real human being. Uh, Chris says, hope all the fluoride stops. Cancer gets cured, etc. Well, cancer is like this thing they've indoctrinated us with. They indoctrinate us. The cancer is so bad and it's a death sentence. It's really not. It's really not. That's why they've tried to crack down on CBD oil because CBD oil has an effect very positive effect. Um, and there are other things as well that, that have had a positive effect. But the, the big thing you gotta get rid of is fluoride. Go fluoride free on your toothpaste and get a, a water filter so that if you have tap water, you can at least filter your water. I recommend ProPure, uh, go, gopropure.com. It's gopropure.com, company in Texas. Uh, not a sponsor, just a good company. And there's another company. Uh, the other company is um, uh, Berkey Filters, based in Colorado. I've heard good things about them. Very similar. Yeah, it's pretty obscene what they've done to all of us. 
Uh, but thankfully, game over, and we won. We won. Again, they'll be talking about this in 100 years. World War Three. World War Three. all these creepy royals and all these trillionaire bankers and the remnants of the Nazi party, right? Operation Paperclip was a very real thing. We beat these freaks. We beat them, folks. I mean, it was like 70%. <laughs> 70% Trump, Trump and 4chan and the U.S. military, but we beat them. We actually did it. They're gone. <laughs> they are history. And the GMOs fold. Uh, correct. What happens there? Trump is trying to, uh, he's trying to make us a world economic superpower again. Uh, and he knows that to export, to export our crops, we cannot be selling GMOs because other countries consider it poison. So there's going to be a radical wave of better food. And you're already starting to see it. When you go to even Walmart, there's a whole section of just organic fruits and vegetables and stuff, organic cheese. You're starting to see it already. Of course, we're in year one, so you're not going to see the full effects for probably a couple of years at the minimum. And it takes everybody a while to get on board. Keep in mind, half the population still thinks I'm crazy. Half the population still thinks I'm crazy. I even saw a guy on Twitter respond to somebody and he said, oh, I met David Seaman once. I met David Seaman once. He's crazy, literally crazy. Okay, I'll take that. I'm happy that I did what I did. I'm happy that we can live free now forever. Thanks to Trump and thanks to Pizzagate going viral. Yeah, already that's happening. Organic foods are going down in price because everybody's demanding it. Trump's a good man, right? He really cares about this country. He is a good person. But time is up. Time's up. Got to head out. Time for dinner. But this has been such an amazing journey. And those of you who have held in with me, those of you watching now, are probably among the most woke, the most woke people on the internet. And you know it, right? You guys know you're smart. You know you're very connected to... Uh, to the forces that be, right? To the higher power. You know you're connected, you know you're smart. So get the word out, help these other people figure it out. Cause it's not hard to figure out. Uh, power consolidation happens throughout all of history. That's what people do is they conquer each other. They consolidate power and they conquer each other. And the really nasty thing about this is that they didn't tell us. They didn't tell us, they were secret. They were like a Trojan horse, a 40 year old Trojan horse. We had no idea that we were being slowly poisoned and fed fake news and all this. But now we know, now we know and never again, never again. Uh, and this is it guys, God bless you all. Cheers, love you all, love this country. <laughs> we really did it, we fucking did it. Good night.